Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Carter Hour. I know I haven't been on here in a while, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys an update of what's uh, been going on. Um, and as I told you guys, I think my last video may have been in July or August. I can't remember. Um, but anyways, I wasn't feeling too great. Um, come to find out, I was uh, pre-ulcer... Ulcer uh, stages and, uh, and it was causing me to feel like really, really crappy. And, and I just didn't want to really do anything anymore on the YouTubes until I was feeling a lot better. So I've been doing a few projects, uh, give you an update. Um, I sold the 2006 Mercury. Uh, I didn't want to do it. I had to, um, so that was one update that uh, I sold the uh, 2006 Mercury Grand Marquis, which pained me because, first of all, it was it was a rare uh, packaged car. It had the air suspension, it had the um, audio file sound system, and it also had um, heated heated leather seats. And finding a combination in that car like that is absolutely rare. It's very hard to find. All three, you know, audiophile, heated seats, and air suspension, all in one package. Uh, usually, you'll find a Mercury with heated seats, no audiophile, and air suspension, or you'll find it with just heated seats. Oh, and the buttons on the wheel too, the buttons on the steering wheel with the wood grain. That was uh, that signifies an ultimate edition, a real, true ultimate edition. And what Mercury had done. Uh, in their last years was run a Mercury Grammar Key LS, a standard LS, with calling it an Ultimate Edition when it should, truly was not an Ultimate Edition. So if you have an 09 that does not have the wood grain uh, steering wheel, and or, or 2009, 10, or 11, I think maybe even trickled back to 08, it doesn't have the wood grain steering wheel and the buttons like to control your temperature and your audio you do not have a true ultimate edition uh true ultimate edition had the wood grain steering wheel with the buttons and i also believe maybe heated seats was an option in it uh but it but this one had you know the the wood grain steering wheel the buttons on the wheel heated seats audio file and um the air suspension and it was a great car it had a lot of miles on it um but I unfortunately had to sell it. Um, probably in the near future, I'll look for something around an 09, 08, 09, 2010 Lincoln Town Car. Um, I think maybe if I get another Panther platform, it's going to be a town car uh, this time around. Um, not sure yet. Uh, also, I got crap in my eyes right now. Um, you guys have probably seen a couple of videos with the Chrysler Sebring uh, in my channel. And uh, last week, I uh, discovered that the heater core lines... Now, this is an absolutely wonderful car to work on. Um, discovered the heater lines are made out of steel. So after a while, you know, steel corrodes and it starts you know, starts corroding from the inside or uh, from the outside in and starts getting pits in it. And after a while, those pits will work their way into the tube and start creating a sprinkler effect, more or less leaking coolant all over the place. So I found uh, the girlfriend said that uh, the heat wasn't working very well. So I... Uh, you know, I go and check it out. I look in the coolant, and I said, well, it doesn't look like there's much coolant in there. And as all of you know, when you have, when you have to top off something other than your washer fluid, you know you got a leak somewhere. Um, and I said, well, either this could be it's leaking internally into the engine, or it's burning off in the engine, or somewhere some line is leaking. And come to find out, it was cold, rainy night, checking this stuff out. And it was the heater core lines. 
So what happens, and, and I'll, I'll get a video up later on online. I'll show you exactly. But there's no videos out on YouTube for this to replace the heater core lines. So what they did was they have rubber lines that come down back down to steel lines and steel lines that kind of go around to the front of the car because the engine's a four-cylinder, so all every port and aspect comes to the front of the engine and not to the rear of the engine. So, anyways, long story short, um, these lines were leaking, so order the part, and I figured the part was going to be really cheap, but it ended up not being so cheap. It was $70 to replace that part, but it was like 12 and a half hours of labor to do it. And when I show you guys more of a visual, you'll understand why it was uh, more of a labor-intensive, uh, you know, procedure. It wasn't just simply replacing lines and being done with it. That would have been nice. So, basically, uh, the lines came down, and they were, I mean, this was a steel line. So, the rubber ends were rusted together. They were joined together with the metal. So I literally had to use silicone spray, like I'd use a half a can of silicone spray just to kind of get some lubrication on there to move the clamps and to finally, and, and I actually had to use a little screwdriver to pry up around the perimeter of those steel lines to get those rubber hoses to break loose because they just weren't doing it. And there's not a hell of a lot of room to work back there, so you really can't you know, get back behind the engine block and really, you know, crank on hoses or anything. You, you really can't do that. So, essentially, um, I uh, got them. I finally got the hoses all broke loose. Uh, luckily, we had a pole barn to work in. It was nice. It was heat. It, we had the heaters going, and uh, it was cold. It was a cold night, uh, but you know, it was in to a pole barn so it was well insulated and it wasn't too cold except for being on the floor i can still feel it but um so we got um i got the line out but i still couldn't get it out and i'm like i wonder how the hell they put this line set in the car and i figured well they probably put it in before they put the damn engine in and i was thinking that and so I'm cranking on this thing. I'm taking out power steering pumps. I'm taking out apparatus all over the place. I'm taking out the uh, coolant reservoir. I'm taking just every part I could think of to get out of the way so I could make enough room to pull the pipe up and out and to put the new one down and in. And it just kept working at it. And, and finally I decided, fuck it. I am going to saw the line in half, drop one part down below the car, and pull the other half out. I had to saw it three times to get this line out, and I knew that wasn't the right way. So I realized, I started looking at it a little bit more, and I realized something. And I said, well, in order to get that steel line down there, we're going to have, because the air conditioner lines go down, um, you know, they go down and they're in the way as well. So uh, I had to evacuate the AC and pull those lines apart. And with a little finagling, I finally got those lines in and got them in. I uh, finally got them hooked up, put everything back together, and then uh, the clamps were a bitch. Um, I couldn't get, or I, I put everything back together down below and up above. So the last part was just putting the clamps onto the hoses. Well, I literally had to take vice grips and close them around the clamps, slip them up on the tube, get the tube slipped back onto the steel lines, which now. The replacement part we got was aluminum, so that shouldn't ever rot out or should take a lot longer to rot out than the steel line did. But literally, it had pits, I mean, and where it bent was like a big gaping hole like that. So I'm surprised for as long as that was like that because it looked like 
it just didn't happen overnight. It looked like it was leaking for quite some time. And underneath the car, you could tell that it leaked a lot of coolant because coolants, you know, as some of you guys know out there, coolant's got some lubricants in it. It's got some greasy lubricants in it. So it looks like the bottom of your car is actually sooted with oil like it might be leaking from your engine when truly it's coming from the coolant coming from the heating lines that uh, swing around and they they come from the front of the car and they kind of angle around to the heater core and um, I was thinking of alternative ways to you know maybe place some rubber hoses versus the steel lines but the problem is there's not a lot of room in that car to to actually um, use something different so I just wanted to do it factory the way it was because generally when you replace it with parts that are meant to go there you're not gonna have any problems down the road so get everything in there get brand new coolant in the in the car everything's working well and so I had to recharge the AC, recharge the AC. Luckily, it was warm enough in the pole barn to do it because, you know, when it's not warm enough out, you don't get a good adequate charge on an AC or AC system. So got the AC charged, got the coolant back in it, had to bleed it out with the bleeder screw, uh, got some air out of the lines, and, um, you know, got all that shit done, that happy horse shit done. And... As soon as I got all that done, um, you know, it took a while for the heat to, to kick in, but it finally kicked in and it was hot as shit. Uh, it was actually working really well. Uh, the engine temperature was staying right within the range it was supposed to stay in. Uh, air conditioning was back working properly again. And um, the only thing that was really wonky about it was... At the same time, I had to take, if, if you guys own a Sebring, a 2003, 2002 through 2006, I think, you have all that shit that's in that one corner that you got to take all out of there in order to, and get out of the way in order to get that line, and you got to take the belt off, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, anyways, I had to take all that shit out, put it all back in. At the same time... I literally had to, you know, evacuate three different types of fluids uh, or, you know, one gas and two fluids. You have your power steering fluid, which is uh, ATF plus four transmission fluid, and then the coolant, and then the Freon. So literally you had to take, I mean, it was a royal pain in the ass. All right. But got it done. And it was late um, Thursday late Thursday night, um, that we got that, yeah, late Thursday night, we got that done, and then, um, when I added power steering fluid back in, I didn't know at the time, because I was told by AutoZone, which I will never trust them to tell me what kind of fluid to put in a car ever again, um, and, and I was stupid, I was stupid, I should have went and looked in the car manual for what type of fluid went in the power steering. Because most cars, they take transmission fluid now for the power steering. So you only have to buy one fluid for two different uh, aspects of the car. Um, so I put in regular power steering fluid, which is more of like a mineral-based fluid. And I started steering the wheel and, you know, and doing that so I get all the air out of the lines because, you know, when you break open the system, you need to, to bleed it. So I was doing that, and then all of a sudden I get to the, you know, the third lock, and, it you know, it, it gets to the end where you're turning left or right, and it was making a squealing noise. It was squealing the belt. It was locking up the pump. And I figured, well, it's probably got some air in the lines or whatever. So long story short, you know, I, I just worked it back and forth and it seemed like it was fine. Uh, the next day, I um, asked the girlfriend, you know, hey, uh, what's, uh, what's going on? You know, was everything all right? And she said in the morning the steering was kind of a little bit weird. It was making a squealing noise. So she drove it to work, drove it 
over to my house, and when she got to go last night, the power steering pump was squealing and it was locking up and the power steering was going in and out and it was a fucking mess. So today, I go to AutoZone, I get uh, two quarts of ATF plus four, take uh, the power steering reservoir that sits up at the top. The pump is at the bottom of the engine, but the reservoir is at the top. Take that out. Start the car, uh, you know, I take the, the reservoir out. I take the small line, which is the return. And I've got some other line that I use. And I've got a barbed fitting that fits in that particular size of line. Put that in there, put that into a gallon jug. And literally sucked out the fluid. You know, literally used the car to suck out the fluid to push it into that um a uh, gallon jug that I had. Uh, it was just like a water jug or milk jug or whatever. So I put, I flush it out, turn off the car, put in, um, you know, fill it up with ATF4. Turn it back on, flush it out, you know, and then uh, what I did was then I took, I had another barb fitting and I had another piece of hose cut so it wouldn't spill out as I filled it in. I connected those together and had that ATF-4 in there, and then I started doing lock-to-lock -lock with the steering wheel, and it was still squealing like a pig. I mean, it was just... Anyway, so we we had it, you know, we were doing lock-to-lock, lock-to-lock, -lock, lock and it was squealing and, and going in and out and locking up, and so I had to work it back and forth, work it back and forth, and then I... Uh, shut it off, disconnected the two drain hose or the you know flush hoses that I have, and wanted to flush out that stuff so I get the contamination of that old, that wrong power steering fluid out. Clean out the reservoir because uh, there's a real fine mesh screen in there, so I cleaned all that out, cleaned all the gook out of it, put it back in, did the flush again, flushed it. I, so I used about a quart and a half to flush the power steering. Uh, and then I added in, uh, and then I took it for a drive, and it was acting kind of weird and squealing and stuff. And then I just sat there for a while, probably for about 45 minutes, just turning the wheel back and forth, turning the wheel back and forth, and then I let it rest. Turn it back and forth, turn it back and forth. And then um, finally... It worked itself in to where it wasn't squealing anymore. It was pumping. It was doing what it was supposed to do. And I noticed when you look, when you take the cap off the reservoir, you you see it creating a wave in there is because that's circulating all the time. So as I was doing the lock to lock, I could see that the pressure was getting better. Like things were, you know, getting better. So I knew that we probably had some air in the rack and pinion. Um maybe some contaminated fluid and then you know so i rocked it locked it back and forth boom 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 took it out i had about a half a quart left drained out the reservoir uh doing the same pumping method um but i didn't want to pump everything out so did that put some steering fluid back in there locked the lock it was still squealing a little bit when you got towards the end of the the turns right so Finally locked the lock, blah, 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 blah. And finally we got to the point where it was uh, not squealing anymore. You could do lock the lock. Everything was turning great and uh, was very happy with the outcome. I'm glad that nothing got damaged because um, definitely didn't need that. So um, we're going to see that over the next couple of days uh, what happens with that. Uh, hopefully nothing more. It just works itself in, but there's no problems with it now. But just remember, if you have a Chrysler product, probably like O2 on up or even even further than that, you got to use that fully synthetic trans fluid in there. Um, and I think if you're using ATF3, you can go to use ATF4. Don't know much about Chrysler. I'm more of a Ford GM type of person, but so that worked out. That was just recently. And then um, other than that, not 
not too many projects going on. Not a lot of things to record, but I wanted to kind of give you guys an update and uh, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, it's December 3rd today. It's hard to believe that we're almost through the year 2016. Um, and... Uh, you know, we had a hell of an election uh, going on. I'm sure a lot of my long-term subscribers can tell who I wanted to win. Um, but, uh, you know, that was, uh, it was a, let's just say I was very pleased with the outcome. And I know some of you won't agree with me, and that's fine. You, you, you have more than, more rights to disagree uh, you know, you can disagree, you can agree, whatever you want to do, but you know, the most important thing is at the end of the day, we're all friends and that's the most important thing. So we're not going to get into a discussion about politics here. I used to do it, but I'm not going to do it anymore. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an update, but that was kind of an interesting thing. I had a friend running for county commissioner, um, and I was helping the campaign. He unfortunately lost, um, which was kind of a stab in the in the chest for me because I was working hard for him on that. That was another thing I was doing. Uh, so it didn't give me a lot of time to spend on YouTube. Um, however, I was responding to comments uh, when I saw them. Another issue I've been having lately, and I don't know if you guys with channels out there that you, you talk back and forth with people on YouTube, but I noticed lately with Firefox that if I go into my channel... I can no longer see notifications. So if you guys send me a notification or, you know, you comment on one of my, my cha uh, channel videos or you comment on my channel, it I'm not ignoring you. I just want to let you know. I'm not ignoring you. I am simply, uh, I simply don't know. I simply don't know because when you go into YouTube as a platform, usually up in the right-hand side, when you're logged in, you say, oh, I got nine notifications, you know. So I used to go down that list and respond to everybody's comments. But lately, that hasn't worked. So Google, YouTube, why don't you get on the ball and get that working again? Um, I've tried that in Firefox. I haven't tried it in Opera or Internet Explorer. I don't even talk about Internet Explorer. That's just terrible, terrible browsers, but... Anyway, um, just want to give you guys an update. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure where the channel is going to head. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens. I'd like to get a couple GoPros so I can kind of maybe when I'm working on something, it's much easier for me to do uh, the filming because keeping something in your hand while you're trying to do something is a royal pain in the ass. So either that or something along those lines, when I get the extra funds to do that, um, I, I would really like to get a couple of different GoPros, uh, GoPro four or five to either attach to my head or, you know, to the chest when I'm working on stuff. And so it kind of gives you guys a point of view, uh, what I'm working on. And so I can do more YouTube videos. So anyways, I really appreciate you guys sticking with me. Um, I know I haven't released anything new since like July or August, one of those two. But uh, I wish everybody well. And if I don't put a video out here before the holidays, I wish you, very, uh, wish you guys all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So uh, for another edition of the Carter Hour, take care on December 3rd, 2016. I'll uh, talk to you guys later. See ya.